who was Richard Cantio? Well, during his lifetime, he became one of the wealthiest private individuals in the world. He was probably one of the most important economists of all time, and one of the most influential economists of all time, and probably someone you may have never heard of before. Cantillon was born in County Kerry, Ireland in the 1680s uh, to a formerly wealthy Irish family whose land was taken by the Protestants. He moved to Europe and soon uh, became a banker in his uncle's uh, bank and eventually went on to own that bank. Uh, in the late 17 teens, he teamed up with John Law with the Mississippi bubble and the Mississippi company. And through that is how he became one of the wealthiest private individuals in the world. And after that, we speculate that he began to study how the economy actually works and what caused this giant economic fiasco, uh, the Mississippi bubble. And so he wrote the book, uh, scholars believe, as a defense of some of the criminal trials that were brought against him by some of his clients. Uh, he died in 1734, we think. Uh, initially, we thought it was a murder. More recent scholars think it may have actually been uh, a fake suicide with him leaving the country with most of his money. Cantillon is considered the first economic theorist. He wrote a general treatment of economics with all of its various aspects. And in particular, he developed a methodology for the first time where economic analysis was scientific and positive. It was not normative, which was the case with many previous writers. Uh, he created thought experiments similar to Mises, Hayek, and Rothbard. And he even created the Ceteris Paribus assumption. So he was important for creating, for the first time, modern economic analysis. Now, his contributions are many. Virtually all of modern economics was contained in that uh, short treatise on economics. Uh, value theory, uh, he created what we now call opportunity cost, the bedrock of Austrian economic analysis. In price theory, is also very Austrian-oriented. Prices, he showed, were based on value to consumers and not based on the cost of production, which would be integrated uh, incorrectly in the classical school of economics. Cantillon created the whole theory of entrepreneurship. And in fact, he took the term entrepreneur, which at the time meant someone who was just reckless or maybe a public contractor. He turned the whole term upside down so that he was talking about business people who were in business uh, at risk, or more specifically, the uncertainty of what the prices would be for the products that they produced. Uh, and so his theory of entrepreneurship is the same basic theory of entrepreneurship that Frank Knight, Ludwig von Mises, and modern Austrians use, uh, where entrepreneurs are at risk, their profits are uncertain. Population theory. Uh, he created a theory of population which is recognized by today's scholars as the real theory of population, why population goes up and down. Uh, and he showed that it was real factors such as customs, such as production and different technologies that ultimately drove populations up or down. And he showed how both could happen. And he basically was criticizing Robert Thomas Malthus in his population principle more than a century before Malthus published it. Uh, Malthus's and other population theories were basically just plotting trends with no economic content. He also was the inventor, the first person to talk about location theory and spatial economics and transportation costs. And he integrated that into all of his economic analysis. So it wasn't just production and consumption, but where would that production take place? How would production be facilitated from point A to point B? And what was the cost involved? And he worked all of that out uh, in a brilliant analysis. And one of his big areas of contribution was in monetary economics. He showed how money came about in the first place. Uh, he showed what money was. 
He overturned the mercantilist fallacy regarding uh, money. And he also showed that it wasn't money that was driving the interest rate up or down in the economy. But again, it was real factors, including time preference, that made that come about. It made Friedrich Hayek label Cantillon's contribution to monetary economics as the supreme achievement. Okay, so based on his work on money, he extended that into international monetary relations, uh, something that had puzzled the mercantilists for decades and decades. The mercantilists wanted to build up money in the economy. They thought money was wealth. Cantillon showed that they were wrong and why their policies were continually being frustrated. So he showed that as money built up in one country because of mercantilist policies that would drive prices up, making their products more expensive and foreign products relatively less expensive so that people in that country would not want to buy the domestic production. They'd want to buy imports that were cheaper, but the fact that they're buying imports means that the gold is flowing back out of the country. And so he really created the first to create the price specie flow mechanism, which brings money on an international scale into equilibrium, a major achievement. And again, undermining the whole mercantilist doctrine. And just as a general matter, Cantillon showed that the economy was a self-regulating uh, mechanism so that government didn't have to interfere it didn't have to set price controls, it didn't have to issue subsidies, that resources would flow to their highest valued uses by consumers. And he used the word regulation probably a hundred times in the essay, but it was always referring to the regulation provided by the marketplace, not government regulation at all. So as a result of all this, he was incredibly uh, influential, uh, especially in France, where Turgot was an obvious student of his book. The French liberals, the physiocrats, Condillac, many, many others, uh, as well as the Scottish philosopher David Hume, uh, who was thought to make many early economic contributions. And of course, Adam Smith actually references Cantillon in The Wealth of Nations. So he was incredibly influential on all of those early economists and really creates the birth of economics as we know it today. Uh, I encourage you to get Murray Rothbard's chapter from his History of uh, Economic Thought book. It's a marvelous survey of Cantillon's contributions. I would also encourage you, if you're really interested, Anton Murphy's biography of Richard Cantillon uh, is a, a splendid work tremendous investigation and finding of facts and trying to use economics to piece those facts together. Incredibly interesting. And then finally, uh, the Mises Institute has published a new translation of Cantillon's essay. And I would encourage you to get that because what we've done is we've looked at the text in incredible detail and tried to figure out ways in which the original English translation and French edition uh, could be improved. We provide uh, abstracts for all the chapters and definitions and footnotes to guide you through Cantillon's original essay on the nature of commerce in general. For more content like this, visit Mises.org.